If you have questions or suggestions for future podcasts, please submit them in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Values and the poor. Hi, I'm Dave Arnott, the Christian Economist. The Wall Street Journal recently published an article titled, America Pulls Back from Values That Once Defined It. That means there's never been a better time to be poor in America. The passing lane into wealth is wide open for five reasons. Here they are. Religion. This year, 39% of the respondents said religion was very important in the survey. That was down sharply from when the journal first asked this question in 1998, when 62% deemed religion to be very important. In so much of my writing and speaking, I've made the point clearly that religious people are happier and richer than non-religious. Now, most of my data comes from the book by Arthur Brooks titled Gross National Happiness. I addressed a young woman in my sophomore class at Dallas Baptist University a couple of weeks ago with the astounding assertion, as a Christian American woman, you're among the happiest people in the world. Now, if you want to increase that measure, just get married, I said to her. Yep, it's true. A Christian American married woman is the happiest person in the world. And three of those are choices. The only one that you're stuck with is the woman part, but that makes her happier also. Okay, so the message to the poor, you can choose to be happy and rich because you can choose to be religious. Multiply. We are commanded to be fruitful and multiply, but according to the Wall Street Journal study, only 23% of adults under age 30 said that having children was very important to them. It's really kind of sad. I mean, it seems so obvious that God made women to reproduce. <laughs> Sorry, I typically give more meaningful economic support to my positions, but this one just seems so basic. I mean, if women don't reproduce, what happens? Well, what happens is what is happening now in every developed country. There are not enough humans to produce economic goods for each other, and we all get poorer. Yep, Ginger reminds everyone we meet that the most viewed of my podcasts is number 88, titled, Don't Fear the Future. The reason I end every podcast with the phrase, fear God, tell the truth, earn a profit, is because if you fear God, you fear nothing else. But accepting the invitation of Christ is a choice, and fearing the future is a choice. Now, fortunately, poor people can choose to follow Christ, and that makes them richer. Hard work. Now, this measure is down from 76% to 62%. Okay, here's the real opportunity for the poor. If 38% of the population is not interested in hard work, the poor can easily set themselves apart by wanting to work hard. Yep, if there's one thing that makes the poor richer, it's hard work. Those who do it get richer, those who don't get poorer. Yeah, I make this point during the first meeting of my econ class at Dallas Baptist University. I show them the final grades of students from a previous semester and show that they almost perfectly correlate with attendance. So I say to them, you know, you think they're smart and dumb students in the class, but you're wrong. If you're smart enough to be accepted into DBU, you can follow a two-dimensional graph and do some simple math so you have the ability to understand economics. After that, it's mostly desire. Those who attend make higher grades. Those who skip make lower grades. It's really that simple. And in general, ceteris paribus, all else being equal as we say in economics, those who work hard get richer. Those who don't, don't. Being in a generation where about half don't want to work hard makes it really easy for the poor to advance in society. Community involvement. The people saying this is very important has dropped from about 42% in 1998 to about 23% today. Now, this is a pretty significant drop, and it's a huge opportunity for the poor. If only a quarter of the population is interested in being involved, that means it's incredibly easy for the poor to succeed. And by definition, markets are community involvement because it's where suppliers meet demanders. You know, think about it. 
If everyone were self-sufficient, we wouldn't need each other. If specialization didn't exist, meaning we were all equal, we wouldn't need markets to exchange goods and services with each other. But God made us to be specialized in various ways. So we would need each other. But only about three quarters of the people realize this. That's a great opportunity for the poor. Education. 12 years of education is free in America and in most parts of the world. Now, I've told my sophomores at DBU that every year of schooling increases their income by 10%. Looking back, that data is correct. Looking forward, we don't know. I mean, some HVAC and plumbers are making pretty good money these days. And there's an article in the Wall Street Journal about the shortage of electricians. So the first 12 years of education are free. After that, it's really cheap. I mean, the best students in my little town graduate from high school with a junior college degree for free. Yes, I said for free. Okay, that's 14 years of education for free. Yeah, I once did the math and concluded that a student living at home, attending the local JUCO, could pay her tuition by working five hours a week at a minimum wage job. Okay, now that's the first two years. The next two, well, those who do well in the first two are offered scholarships for the next two. Yeah, those who don't do well, yeah, they're being told by the market that they should do something else besides going to college. Here's an example. Ben Carson spoke at Dallas Baptist University. In a previous address, Ginger and I heard his story of growing up as one of only two sons of a single, mostly illiterate woman who cleaned houses for a living for rich people. Now, she was bright enough to notice a difference between the rich and the poor. Her observation, the rich people read books. Her sons watched TV. So <laughs> she forced them to read a book and write a report on a regular basis. Now, since she couldn't read, the boys had to read the reports to her. You know, are you getting the point of the story? The poor have an escape route via free education. Th that the academic rigor of our public education system is floundering. Now that's a topic for another podcast. I mentioned that more in my podcast number 74, titled The Wall of Separation Between Education and State. There is no American ethnicity. American values are not scarce. There is no American people group. There are French and German and Italian people groups. There are Chinese and Japanese and Philippine people groups. But there is no American people group. Anyone can join because it's determined by a value system, not an ethnicity. Dennis Prager says you can find the three American values, according to him, on a coin. Liberty, in God we trust, and e pluribus unum. Now today, I've suggested there are five. Religion, multiplying, hard work, community involvement, and education. Christianity is not scarce. You're not born into Christianity. Each person makes an individual decision to join it, much like they make that decision to join the value system of the United States. So the kingdom of God contains people from all nations, all colors, all cultures. That's the strength of Christianity. It is able to flex to adapt to various cultures around the world. Christianity is often considered a Western religion, and I understand that, but, but Jesus was an Asian. I mean, the church in Western Europe came about a few hundred years after his death. Yet to see Christianity as a Western or American religion is absolutely wrong. It's a religion that adapts to various cultures. Yet, don't you think God would make it that way? Really? <laughs> you don't think God would discriminate because of skin color or ethnicity. He doesn't. Okay, and I hope you're getting some sense of my excitement about Christian economics, because Christianity is that way. It's what economists would call a public good. Because your neighbor has it doesn't mean you can't get it. There's no scarcity in God's love. It's available to all, rich and poor. And the avenue from poor to rich just opened a little wider. I'm Dave Arnott, the Christian Economist. Fear God, tell the truth, earn a profit. See you next time. For more information, please visit us online at DaveArnott.com. 
If you have questions or suggestions for future podcasts, please submit them online or in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.